Miami and the Florida Gold Coast. Table of Contents, Miami and the Florida Gold Coast. This is a brief but comprehensive overview of Miami and the Florida Gold Coast region with visiting and touring. Information. Geography. History. Attractions. And other points of interest. This will include Mimi. Fort Lauderdale Hollywood. And the Everglades National Park. This is part one of a two-part series. These are parts of a series of videos on Florida. Preceded by part one. The two Henrys in the history of Florida. Part two. The history of Florida. And followed by part four. The overseas railroad and highway. Part five. Key West. Part six. Walt Disney His Parks. And Florida. Part seven. The Fun Coast of Florida. And Part 8. Florida Heroes, Gory and Tuttle. Dr. Sidney Soclough. Dr. Sidney22 at gmail.com. 2022. Narration by Dr. Sidney Soclough. Zoe Phonemes. And Nathan Coltove. For a complete discussion of YouTube navigation, Please go to tinyurl.com slash ytnavigator. Chapter 1 The Florida Gold Coast This is a vintage Florida picture postcard. Here is a map of the state of Florida. Florida is quite a long state. The distance from Pensacola in the western end of the Panhandle to Jacksonville is 335 miles. The distance from Jacksonville to Miami is 317 miles. The distance by road from Pensacola to Miami is 672 miles. And to Key West it is 832 miles. The Gold Coast is a region of Florida that runs along the southeastern coast of the state between Palm Beach and Miami. Here are various regions of Florida. The various coastal regions of the state have been given distinctive names. The Gold Coast includes the cities of West Palm Beach, Boca Raton, Pompano Beach, the famous spring break town of Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood, Miami and Miami Beach. The Gold Coast includes a multitude of beach cities and towns. The southern part of the Gold Coast from Pompano Beach, just north of Fort Lauderdale, down to Miami is almost a solidly built-up urban area. The Gold Coast from West Palm Beach south to Miami is a relatively narrow strip of land. No more than about 20 miles wide. Sandwiched between the Atlantic Ocean on one side and the Everglades Swamp on the other. Here is a satellite view of the same area. We see the densely populated area from Miami north to Fort Lauderdale and continuing to a lesser extent up to West Palm Beach. Here again. We see the densely populated area from Miami north to Fort Lauderdale and continuing to a lesser extent up West Palm Beach. The investments made in real property were termed gold, hence the name Gold Coast. The name Gold Coast was well deserved from about the 1920s onward. With the arrival of Henry Flagler's railroad, more and more northerners started arriving. New buildings and architecture flourished and are known today as the Art Deco style, most evident in Miami's South Beach. Initially only the wealthiest Americans were establishing footholds and second residences. This was first towards the northern end of the Gold Coast and in Palm Beach. But not to much later more common folks started coming and taking up residence. Many of the hotels and other buildings, originating from the 1920s and 1930s have been refurbished and constitute the backbone of Miami's tourism and convention hospitality industry. Examples of these hotels are the Eden Rock, the Fontainebleau Hilton Resort, the Clevelander Hotel Miami Beach. The Savoy Hotel Miami Beach. 
The Sagamore Hotel Miami Beach And the National Hotel Fort Lauderdale Fort Lauderdale is in southeastern Florida, in the Gold Coast region, just north of Miami. Fort Lauderdale is in Broward County, only 25 miles north of Miami. Fort Lauderdale is known as the Venice of America due to its extensive and intricate canal system. The Intracoastal Waterway passes through Fort Lauderdale. The Atlantic Intracoastal Waterway runs from Norfolk, Virginia to the Florida Keys. It consists of natural inlets, salt water rivers, bay sounds and artificial canals. It provides a navigable route along its length, without many of the hazards of travel on the open sea. Fort Lauderdale, the Venice of America. As of 2023, the city population is an estimated 180,000 with 2 million in Broward County. Fort Lauderdale is known for its beaches, many bars, nightclubs, strip clubs, and overall party atmosphere. The first inhabitants of the area were Seminole Indians who arrived in the 18th century. During the Second Seminole War, Major William Lauderdale led his Tennessee volunteers into the area and raised New River Fort on the site of the modern city in 1838. In 1893, a young Ohioan named Frank Stranahan arrived and built a house that served as the first trading post, post office, bank and town hall of the area. The Stranahan house was built near the site of the New River Fort and still stands today as a museum, open to the public. Built in 1901 by the father of Fort Lauderdale Frank Stranahan, this house once served as a trading post for Seminole trappers who came here to sell pelts. It's been a post office, town hall, and general store, and now serves as a museum of South Florida pioneer life containing turn-of-the-19th-century furnishings and historic photos of the area. Close by the old Stranahan House is the modern-day river walk in downtown Fort Lauderdale along the New River. Also located in downtown Fort Lauderdale is the old Fort Lauderdale Village Museum and Historical Society. On the River Walk, where Flagler's Railway crosses the New River. The museum tells the story of the region from the pioneers of Fort Lauderdale to the present day, through its four historic structures dating back to 1905. They are the New River Inn, the Philemon Bryan House and the Acetylene Building, which produced acetylene gas to light the New River Inn, and the 1907 King Cromarty House Museum, which belonged to one of the first pioneer families in Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale was officially incorporated as a town in 1911 and began as a predominantly agricultural community, raising dairy cows and citrus groves. Fort Lauderdale and its surrounding suburbs experienced tremendous growth following the end of World War II. The economy of Fort Lauderdale relies heavily on tourism. During the 1970s, the city was known as a spring break destination for college students. Since the 1980s, police have cracked down on underage drinking and other illicit activity. And the tourist dollars have been largely redirected toward cruise ships and other nautical recreation. Fort Lauderdale now attracts a more sophisticated and affluent crowd. Fort Lauderdale is a major manufacturing and maintenance center for yachts. The boating industry is responsible for over 100,000 jobs in the area. With its many canals and proximity to the Bahamas and Caribbean, Fort Lauderdale is also a popular yachting vacation stop. Canals permeate much of Fort Lauderdale-like streets. River Walk is in downtown Fort Lauderdale along the New River. This shows the location of the New River and the River Walk in downtown Fort Lauderdale. 
An excellent way to see Fort Lauderdale is to take a cruise on the New River and the many canals. Much of Fort Lauderdale can be seen from cruises on the New River and the canals. An exciting way to see Fort Lauderdale is a cruise on the Jungle Queen. They offer narrated 90-minute sightseeing cruises through the Venice of America, Fort Lauderdale's New River. The cruise passes through the canals called Millionaire's Row with homes of the rich and famous and spectacular mega yachts. This is a map of the Fort Lauderdale sightseeing cruise on the Jungle Queen. Morning and afternoon sightseeing cruises are available every day of the week. Leaving at 12 noon and 2.30 in the afternoon. There is also a combination of the 45-minute sightseeing cruise and a visit to the Jungle Queen Tropical Island. At the Tropical Island, there is a dinner and a show. This cruise leaves the Bahia Mar Yachting Center at 6 p.m. and returns at 10 p.m. An enjoyable way to get around Fort Lauderdale and see the sights is the water taxi. This is a map and list of stops of the water taxis. On the south side of Fort Lauderdale is Hollywood, Florida. Strolling along the Hollywood Beach Boardwalk is a popular activity. The Hollywood Beach Boardwalk is a 2.5-mile-long pedestrian promenade with joggers, cyclists, and beachgoers of all ages. Port Everglades is one of the busiest cruise ship terminals, as well as being the 13th largest cargo port in the United States. Port Everglades is ranked the third busiest cruise home port, accommodating more than 1.72 million passengers. Chapter 6 Miami The city of Miami is the seat of Miami-Dade County in South Florida. With a population of 435,000. It is the second most populous city in Florida after Jacksonville. With a population of 962,000. Miami is the center of the Lorga Miami metropolitan area with a population of 6.3 million. Miami is the largest city in the South Florida metropolitan area, which comprises Miami-Dade County, Broward County, and Palm Beach County. It is the largest metropolitan area in the southeastern United States and the sixth largest metropolitan area in the entire United States. These are the population numbers of the 10 most populous counties in Florida. Note that the three most populous counties comprise the Gold Coast region of Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. Miami-Dade County has a population of 2.7 million, making it the most populous county in Florida and the seventh most populous county in the NTUS. The name of the county was changed from Dade County to Miami-Dade County in 1997, making it the only county in the U.S. with a hyphenated name. The name change was prompted by the international name recognition of Miami, Miami, and the surrounding metropolitan area are situated on northern Biscayne Bay, between the Everglades and the Atlantic Ocean. Bridges over Biscayne Bay connect Miami to the islands of Miami Beach and Key Biscayne. Chapter 7 The History of Miami Spaniards in the 16th century found a village, perhaps 2,000 years old, of Tequesta Indians on the site. The name Miami 
probably meaning big water or sweet water, may have referred to Lake Okeechobee or to local Native Americans who took their name from the lake. In 1567 the Spanish established a mission there as part of a futile attempt to subdue the Tequesta. They ceded the area to Great Britain in 1763, but regained it in 1783. The largest city in the state was Key West with 10,000 population. St. Augustine's population was only 2,100 and that of Tampa was less than 1,000. Most of the state's population was in the north, adjacent to Georgia and Alabama. The southern part of the state was mostly an uninhabited area of swamps and wilderness. There was no Miami as such. Instead, there was a fort built during the Seminole Wars on the Miami River, known as Fort Dallas, with perhaps a hundred settlers in the area. After the United States acquired Florida from Spain in 1821, Fort Dallas, the site of present-day Miami, was built in 1836 as a base during the Seminole Wars. A few settlers, among them Julia D. Tuttle, known as the mother of Miami, and William B. Burkle, gradually moved into the area. Fort Dallas was built on the Miami River near Biscayne Bay. Later the name of the settlement was changed to Miami. Julia Tuttle, the mother of Miami. Julia DeForest Tuttle, 1849-1898, was an American businesswoman who was the original owner of the land upon which Miami was built and was largely responsible for convincing Flagler to extend his railroad down to Miami. For these reasons, Julia Tuttle is called the mother of Miami. She is the only woman to found a major American city. Julia Sturdevant was the daughter of Ephraim Sturdevant, a Florida planter and state senator. She was born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1849. Julia married Frederick Leonard Tuttle in 1867. They had two children, a daughter, Francis Ameline, born 1868, and a son, Henry Ethelbert, born 1870. After the United States acquired Florida from Spain in 1821, Fort Dallas, the site of present-day Miami, was built in 1836 as a base during the Seminole Wars. Fort Dallas was built on the Miami River near Biscayne Bay. Later the name of the settlement was changed to Miami. Tuttle first came to Fort Dallas in 1876 from Cleveland on a steamship after her father and mother had moved to South Florida. When her father died in 1890 and left her his land in Florida, she sold her home in Cleveland and relocated to Biscayne Bay. A few settlers, among them Julia D. Tuttle, known as the mother of Miami, and William B. Brickle, gradually moved into the area. Tuttle used the money from her parents' estate to purchase the James Egan Grant of 640 acres, where the city of Miami is now located, on the north side of the river, including the old Fort Dallas stone buildings, and the two-story rock house built by Richard Fitzpatrick's slaves some 50 years earlier. The Miami River of Florida, not to be confused with the much larger and longer river of the same name in Ohio, drains out of the Everglades and runs through the city of Miami, including downtown. The Miami River is five and one-half miles long and flows from the terminus of the Miami Canal at the Miami International Airport to the port of Miami at Biscayne Bay. The Miami River was originally a natural river inhabited at its mouth by the Tequesta Indians. But it was dredged and is now polluted throughout its route through Miami-Dade County. The mouth of the river is home to the Port of Miami and many other businesses whose pressure to maintain it has helped to improve the river's condition. 
Julia converted part of the buildings of Fort Dallas into her home in 1891. Tuttle brought her family to live there. She repaired and transformed the home into one of the show places in the area with a sweeping view of the river and Biscayne Bay. This is a sign at the Tuttle home site. It reads, Mrs. Julia D. Tuttle of Cleveland, Ohio acquired 644 acres on the north bank of the Miami River in 1891. She resided in the remodeled officers' quarters of Old Fort Dallas 100 yards southeast of this spot until her death September 14, 1898. With rare foresight and energy, she persuaded Henry M. Flagler to extend his railroad to Miami in 1896. As inducement, Mrs. Tuttle gave him 100 acres for a railroad terminal and hotel, and 263 acres in alternate city blocks, more than half her land, thus earning her fame as the mother of Miami. The Miami Hotel was the city's first hotel, according to the State Archives of Florida. It was built by Julia Tuttle as a bunkhouse. She had the building jacked up set on a brick foundation and enlarged. It burned down in 1899. Dallas Park, home of Mrs. Julia Tuttle, originally stood between Southeast 2nd and Miami Avenue facing the Miami River. The railroad comes to Miami. Flagler originally intended for West Palm Beach to be the terminus of his railroad system. But, a freeze during the winter of 1894-95 killed most of Florida's citrus crop. This freeze extended south down the Florida peninsula reaching almost to present today, West Palm Beach. 60 miles south. The town known today as Miami was reportedly unharmed by the freeze. During the big freeze of 1894 to 1895, Julia Tuttle reportedly sent Flagler a fresh orange blossom to prove that the freeze had not reached Miami. This convinced Flagler to extend the railroad down to Miami. To further convince Flagler to continue the railroad to Miami, he was offered land in exchange for laying rail tracks. This offer was from private landowners, including Julia Tuttle, who ran a trading post on the Miami River. This convinced Flagler to extend the railroad down to Miami. Under an agreement between the two, Tuttle supplied Flagler with the land for a hotel and a railroad station for free and they split the remainder of her 640 acres north of the Miami River in alternating sections. On April 22, 1896, train service of the Florida East Coast Railway came to the area. Flagler's Railroad, renamed the Florida East Coast Railway in 1895, reached Biscayne Bay by 1896. This led to the development of Miami which was only an unincorporated area at the time. Flagler extended his Florida East Coast Railway to Miami after Tuttle and Brickell each gave him half of their land holdings for the project. Flagler then dredged the harbor, built the Royal Palm Hotel, and promoted tourism. Miami was incorporated that same year of 1896. Flagler dredged a channel, built streets, instituted the first water and power systems, and financed the city's first newspaper, the Metropolis. This is the initial issue of the first newspaper in Miami, the Metropolis, which later became the Miami News on May 15, 1896. The Miami Metropolis with an article about Julia Tuttle. The Miami Metropolis with an article about Julia Tuttle. The initial issue of the first newspaper in Miami, the Metropolis, 
which later became the Miami News on May 15, 1896. Pay tribute to Mrs. Tuttle by saying, A few years hence it will be realized that she built a sick better than the critics knew. And the future residents of Miami will accord her full credit for her plans of today. And bless the good fate that put the founding of Miami in such competent hands. When the city was incorporated in 1896, its citizens wanted to honor the man responsible for its growth by naming it Flagler. Flagler declined the honor, persuading them to use an old Indian name, Miami. This is Henry Morrison Flagler, builder of Florida and father of Miami. In 1897, Flagler opened the exclusive Royal Palm Hotel in Miami. He became known as the father of Miami. The Hotel Royal Palm was named because of the extensive Royal Palm trees in the area. Julia died in 1898, at age 49. Her funeral took place at her Fort Dallas home, and she was buried in a place of honor at the city of Miami Cemetery. Just as Tuttle is called the mother of Miami, Flagler became known as the father of Miami. Coincidentally, both Tuttle and Flagler had previously lived in Cleveland, where they first met. This is the Julia Tuttle Causeway, Interstate 195, connecting I-95 in Miami with Miami Beach. Florida's booms and busts. 1920s. During the Florida land boom in the early and mid-1920s, Miami's population more than tripled. In the 1920-1925 period, Florida experienced a land boom, with a large increase in population. This ended in 1926, with the collapse of land speculation compounded by a devastating hurricane. The 1920s were a prosperous time for much of the nation. Florida's new railroads opened up large areas to development, spurring the Florida land boom of the 1920s. Investors of all kinds, mostly from outside Florida, raced to buy and sell rapidly appreciating land in newly platted communities such as Miami and Palm Beach. The Dixie Highway, from Montreal to Miami, was completed in 1915, and trailer parks, roadside attractions and amusements began appearing throughout Florida. During the height of the 1920s land boom, thousands of copies of this poster envisioning the future University of Miami campus were sent around the country to attract new residents to the new Miami subdivision of Coral Gables. A majority of the people who bought land in Florida were able to do so without stepping foot in the state by hiring people to speculate and buy the land for them. By 1925, the market ran out of buyers to pay the high prices. And soon, the boom became a bust. The collapse of this speculation compounded by a devastating hurricane in 1926, dampened Miami's fortunes for more than a decade. The 1926 Miami hurricane further depressed the real estate market. This was further exacerbated a few years later by the Wall Street crash in 1929 and the onset of the Great Depression. Miami Beach underwent a brief construction boom in the mid-1930s, when many Art Deco buildings were erected. But this came to an end when, during World War II, soldiers replaced tourists at the oceanfront hotels, and long stretches of beach were converted to rifle ranges. In 1945, many soldiers returned to the Miami area to live. In the 1950s and 60s, Latin American immigrants, particularly those from Cuba, began to arrive in large numbers. During the 1980s Miami gained a reputation as a center of the illegal drug trade, 
and several acts of violence were directed against foreign tourists in the early 1990s. However, by the end of the 20th century tourism was rebounding. Hurricanes. This is the total number of hurricane strikes by counties from 1900 to 2010. We see that South Florida, particularly the Gold Coast region of the Southeast, is especially in danger from hurricanes. When comparing the numbers of hurricane landfalls, differences in the areas of the counties should be considered. Also, note that these are landfalls. So the counties of the interior are not represented. However, the intensity of the hurricane winds is generally very much less. And they are not subject to storm surges. Monroe County has the most hurricane landfalls. Note, however, that this county includes all of the Florida Keys down to Key West. Aside from Monroe County, the most hurricane-prone counties are Miami-Dade with 25, Broward with 22, and Palm Beach with 18. These numbers sound dreadful. But remember, this is over 110 years. Thus, for Miami-Dade County, with 25 landfalls from 1900 to 2010, the probability of a hurricane is still less than once every three years for the Enter County. These are the most intense landfalling U.S. hurricanes. The 1935 Labor Day hurricane struck the Florida Keys. Camille in 1969 made landfall in Mississippi and Louisiana on the Gulf Coast. Michael hit the Panhandle region of northwest Florida. Katrina in 2005 hit southern Louisiana and Mississippi. Andrew devastated the area south of Miami. And Indianola affected the Texas Gulf Coast. The Labo Day hurricane was the most intense hurricane known to have struck the United States and is one of the strongest recorded landfalls worldwide. In 1992 Hurricane Andrew caused some 50 deaths and considerable property damage to areas of the county just south of Miami, although the city itself was largely spared. Hurricane Andrew in August 1992 was the most costliest and most destructive hurricane to ever hit Florida until Hurricane Irma 25 years later in 2017. This shows the path of Hurricane Andrew. It was a Category 5 Atlantic hurricane that struck the Bahamas, Florida and Louisiana before moving inland through Mississippi. This is Hurricane Andrew as it struck Florida just south of Miami in August 1992. Andrew was the fourth strongest landfalling hurricane in the U.S. in decades and the costliest hurricane until Katrina surpassed it in 2005 in addition. Andrew is the only one as a Category 5. Alongside the 1935 Labor Day hurricane, Camille in 1969, and Michael in 2018. While the storm also caused major damage in the Bahamas and Louisiana, the greatest impact was felt in South Florida, where the storm made landfall as a Category 5 hurricane, with gusts as high as 174 miles per hour. 280 kilometers per hour. Hurricane Andrew destroyed more than 63,500 houses, damaged more than 124,000 others, caused $27.3 billion in damage, equivalent to $60 billion in 2023, and left 65 people dead. Recommended videos, Miami and the Florida Gold Coast. Recommended video, Top 10 Things to Do in Fort Lauderdale in Miami. Recommended video, Fort Lauderdale Travel Guide 2021 Downtown and the Beaches. Recommended video, Top 10 Things to Do in Miami and Miami Beach, Florida. 
Recommended Video, Building the Magic City, A History of Miami, Part 1. Recommended Video, Building the Magic City, A History of Miami, Part 2. Recommended Video, Art Deco in 9 Minutes, Why is it the most popular architectural style? YouTube.b web link 906. Recommended video. The history of Florida explained in 10 minutes. Recommended video. The Florida dream. Recommended video. Top 10 things to do in Miami. Florida travel guide. Recommended video. Fort Lauderdale travel guide. Downtown in the beaches. Recommended video, The 10 Best Things to Do in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Recommended video, Fort Lauderdale Travel Guide. Downtown in the beaches. Recommended video, YouTube Navigation. Recommended videos. Walking Tour of Miami and the Gold Coast. For a street level experience of Miami and the Gold Coast. View the video walking tours. It's the next best thing to being there. Recommended videos, playlist. Walking tour of Miami and the Gold Coast. Recommended video, Miami, Florida walking tour. Recommended video, downtown Miami, full walking tour. Recommended video, Miami Beach walking tour. Recommended video, Miami South Beach. Recommended video, Marvel at the Art Deco Architecture of Miami Beach, Florida. Walk with travel plus leisure. Recommended video, Airboat Ride with Everglades Safari Park, Everglades National Park, Florida. Recommended video, Everglades National Park Travel Guide. Recommended video, Jungle Queen River Boat Tour. Fort Lauderdale. Table of Contents, Miami and the Florida Gold Coast. Thanks for watching. Please watch some more of my great videos.